For many years, TACMAN has been the gold standard chemistry for real-time PCR. It's famed for its unparalleled specificity, sensitivity, and ease of use. So, it's not surprising that users want to know what Shrikant at ICL College in India asked recently. Namely, how does TACMAN work? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Like any PCR, TACMAN-based reactions require a double-stranded template, as well as two fairly standard target-specific primers. But unlike those used in regular PCR, TACMAN assays require a third sequence-specific oligo called a probe. TACMAN probes are quite different from the primers in two ways. First, they can't be extended by our friendly enzyme, TAC polymerase, since they lack a free hydroxyl group. What's more, TACMAN probes are covalently joined to two other molecules. On the 5' end, there's a fluorescent molecule known as the reporter. I call that because it reports signal to us as we generate more and more product. On the 3' end is a molecule known as the quencher, which quenches the fluorescent signal from the reporter under certain circumstances. Well, let's see what those circumstances are. Here, we're looking at an intact probe, with the reporter in green, the quencher in red. Normally, when we zap the probe with light, we expect the reporter to get excited and fluoresce. But because the quencher is in close proximity to the reporter, instead what happens is this. The energy gets transferred from reporter to quencher. This phenomenon is known as FRET, or fluorescent resonance energy transfer. The important thing to note here is that as long as the probe remains intact, there is no permanent increase in fluorescent signal from the reporter. However, if the reporter and quencher are permanently separated during the reaction, and then light strikes that reaction, the reporter does in fact fluoresce, producing signal that the instrument can detect. The basic idea then is that each time we create a new PCR amplicon, we want to permanently split the reporter and quencher. By doing so, fluorescence will always increase proportionally with product, allowing us to effectively monitor what's happening in our reactions throughout the run. Well, here it is in action. We begin our reactions by denaturing our template at a high temperature. As we lower the temperature, our probe and primers bind. TAC now comes in, finds the primers, and begins the extension phase of PCR by creating new complementary strands of DNA. Oh, but wait a second. There's a probe sitting in the way. It's a showdown in the making. What will the polymerase do? Stop in its tracks? Turn back in fear? Nay, friends, not TAC polymerase. You see, our enzyme has what's referred to as exonuclease activity, meaning it pretty much eats DNA for lunch. So when TAC reaches the probe, it simply chews it to bits on its way to creating new amplicon. As a result, the reporter and quencher are physically separated, creating a permanent increase in fluorescence that, not coincidentally, perfectly accords with our doubling a product. And of course, our real-time instrument can monitor and record this increase in fluorescence after each cycle, generating an amplification plot that's more than a little useful for interpreting our data.